So the next thing that we're going to look at is what it means for a sequence to be bounded. Okay, so here's a definition. Okay. So we'll have a sequence, let's say AN. And we'll say that it's bounded if it's underline bounded. So it's bounded if there are constants, let's say little m and big M, such that a n, each term in the sequence a n, is always between little m and big M. So little m is your lower bound, big M is your upper bound, and of course, we need that to hold for all natural numbers, right? It's for all n equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. We require every single term in the sequence to be between these two bounds. Okay, so that's a relatively straightforward definition. Visually, you can sort of think about how this looks, right? Um, if you plot the terms in your sequence, you have some upper bound big M, some lower bound little m, and every term in the sequence has to lie in between those two bounds. Okay. So we come over here to this example. We've got a couple of sequences. We want to decide whether or not these are bounded. Uh, it becomes pretty clear once you start writing out terms in the sequence. right? So here we have 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 over 4, and so on. Um, so in particular, they, they keep getting smaller, right? And I think it's pretty clear here that we have 1 over n less than or equal to 1 for all n bigger than or equal to 1. Uh, in fact, if you just take reciprocal of both sides, right? If, if you if you have an inequality involving positive numbers and you take reciprocals, the inequality reverses and done. Okay. On the other hand, if we come over to here, you look at the sequences, right? Two. I mean, maybe we start at two to the zero, so one, two, four, eight, sixteen, so on. Um, these are not going to be bounded, right? That they're they grow without bound. It's an exponential function. We know, in fact, we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n is infinite, so they can't possibly be an upper bound, right? Um, these numbers grow without bound.